Yo, 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 good morning, June 25th, it's a Monday, 2018, and shit, man, y'all might not even get this podcast till like Tuesday or Wednesday, it's currently about, it's exactly 8.03 in the morning right now, and uh, I already worked, uh, did my morning workout as usual, and I'm kind of just uh, cooling today, I'm, pr- I'm running pretty good on time, I got about an extra hour just to sit around and fuck around for a while, so... I kind of thought about getting on the game and or maybe watching some TV, but I said, fuck it, man. I'm going to go ahead and record maybe about 30 minutes to a podcast. Um, I don't know. Like I said, the reason I said maybe tomorrow, maybe even Wednesday, hell, maybe even later than that, is because I don't know when I'm going to have the time to put on more, uh, more time onto the podcast. You know, each podcast, I like to put at least 45 minutes. I try to shoot for an hour at least, but... You know, shit, sometimes by the time I get to 45 minutes, like I think my last podcast was closer to 45 minutes than an hour. I think it was about 48. But, you know, I want to give you guys at least 40 minutes of a podcast to listen to. Um, But hell, sometimes I might put out a 30 minute podcast like I might talk right now for 30 minutes and listen back to it a little bit. Listen to parts of it and say, fuck it, man, that's good enough and upload it. So uh, we're just going to kind of play it by ear. But, you know. I've kind of learned now that just with my schedule, with school and everything, it's best just to do something when I know I have the time. Like when I have the time, just go ahead and do something that I need to get done. So um, currently, that's usually something pertaining to my YouTube channel. So whether it's uh, making a video about certain topics, recording a podcast, whatever, I just like to go ahead and do it when I know I have the time. Um, And man, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm getting to that point now with, with school. It's like, like, I'll, I'll, I don't know if I'm like everybody else, but I go through cycles with school. Like, when I first start off, it's cool. You know, you come in, you're getting all your homework done. You can go the, the whole three hours in class without looking at your phone. But then just slowly and slowly, you get more and more burnt out. Homework starts to accumulate, and it gets harder and harder, and you just really start losing interest. And, you know, you got to start taking all those exams and... You know, the grace periods and all the online classes starts going away. So you got to start buying books and man, you just get burnt out really, really fast. But like I was saying on my last podcast, the one good thing about summer classes, even though it is like pretty tough, like uh, mentally, it is pretty mentally exhausting, at least at the at the bare minimum, I'll be done in a few more weeks. You know what I'm saying? And I got July 4th, uh, uh, July 4th off, of course. So it's, you know, just a few more weeks. And um, luckily, I'm not taking really any classes like like for me, school has never been difficult for me as far as, you know, the subjects. The only subjects I really kind of struggle with are math and even math. I'm, if I really pay attention, I really buckle down. I'll get it. You know, I can get a B or a C. But the problem with me for school is, uh, you know, just the the. The I guess you could say the discipline, the lack of motivation. Like I just I've always been very unmotivated when it came to school. Um, so it's like a lot of times I don't feel like getting up and going. And, you know, especially now because I walk up to the train station. Sometimes I just don't feel like walking up to the train station. I don't feel like getting on that goddamn train because in the morning it's always packed. So I usually have to end up standing up and whatever, man. But, you know complainers nothing uh complainers don't get shit but more complaints here what's the goddamn t- <laughs> there's a saying that says something about complainers but you know it is what it is man it's not too tough it could be a hell of a lot worse and truth be told it's even though i don't like school i, I did kind of miss school taking those semesters off because it's just like i was working and everything i was doing things with my time and i enjoyed the time off but I don't know. It's just kind of like I was delaying the inevitable, taking all that time off. So it's it's kind of good just to be go ahead and getting it knocked out. And like I said, at the end of the semester, I'll look back and I'll say, man, that wasn't shit. It was just a few weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this shit done. But man, I wanted to do a lot of different podcasts. I've been telling you guys about these different podcasts I wanted to do, but you know, it's it's a it's a culmination of reasons why I haven't done them. First off, like I told you, I don't have the time. And well, at least now I've learned how to record a podcast and if it gets cut off, I can merge it because before I would be hesitant to start a podcast because I would literally have to sit down for like an hour and a half straight, 
without any interruptions. I was like, man, I can't be doing this all the time. But now I've actually learned to record some of it and record some of it later on and piece them together and all that. I've learned how to do that now. All I got to do is um, save the podcast as a video and then merge them in the uh, in the same app that I do the rest of my uh, edits with. So shouldn't be too difficult to keep on learning. You know, I'm getting better at it. So with that being said, I am going to start doing more pot more podcasts now. And so you got that aspect of it, which, you know, I've completely erased that. But also, you know, certain people I've wanted to do podcasts with, you know, should, you know, people get other people get busy, too. So it, you, it's usually a, a it's usually a situation where I get I get free for like two hours and then I text the person I was thinking about doing the podcast. I'm like, hey, man, you free right quick. You know, it's not really ever planned. And of course, they're usually not free. And, you know, it's always some bullshit, man. But I want to do my next podcast. It might later. Like I said, I might do another segment of this podcast later on. But the one you're currently listening, listening to. But I I want to do a podcast about conspiracy theories. I really did conspiracy theories, man. And I've always like gone back and forth on conspiracy theories. Like when I was around eight, eight years old. I would look at uh, ancient aliens and all these other conspiracy theory shows, and then I would get off of it for about a year. And then, you know, one day I would just be on YouTube, bored as fuck, and kept going to recommend a video after recommend a video. Next thing I know, I'm back on conspiracy theories again. And this was like a cycle for me. Like every year I would get into it, and then I would be off of it for about six months to a year. And I would just just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And like right now, I'm kind of into it again. So I want to go ahead and do some podcasts while I'm into it. But the reason why I always fall out, uh, lose interest, I always fall out of it is just because you reach a point where you realize how much time you're devoting to learning about these conspiracy theories. Like, especially now, there's just so many different conspiracy theories, man. It's it's impossible not to, to spend hours and hours and so much time and energy and you know, not just that, man, but you reach a certain level of paranoia when you look at it, all these conspiracy theories, man, because it's like, man, I don't know if this is true or not, but if it's true, we're all going to die next week. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you start looking at people crazy and I, I never got to that point. But, you know, you just you, you go too far down the rabbit hole. I think I think as long as you just uh, focus on conspiracy theories that actually have some substance, like, for example, JFK. 9/11 like it's clear that it's not as cut and dry as they try to make it seem. There's clear there's clearly some it's it's clearly some conspiracy some valid conspiracy theories there, but you know, and hell, even something like flat earth. I mean, flat earth is, you know, it, it's harmless. It's really not going to you know, make you go down that rabbit hole, but when you start like I remember I was on Reddit one time and this guy and I don't believe him, but this guy was talking about this virus coming from outer space and it was, and it, he, it was like, man, it was like a essay each time. He did like five parts. Like every two weeks he was doing, he was logging in. And I don't know, man, it was just a whole bunch of bullshit. But if that were true and I believe, well, I don't even say if, if it was true, but if I believed, it didn't even have to really be true. But if I believed it was true, man, I would be terrified because I read that like a year ago. He said the world should have ended by now. Like I would have been terrified. So, like, I remember, man, back in 2012, you remember uh, uh, the doomsday, December 21st, 2012? Man, when I tell you I was for the fucking shake out my motherfucking boots when, on that night, I remember on December 20th, it was about 1130, man, and I had been playing video games, and I was nervous. And I looked down, and it was like 1150, and I said, oh, my God, we got about 10 minutes left to live. <laughs> and I kind of got, like... I kind of got a little bit of comfort because, you know, China had already been in December 21st and they were like, well, they're already in December 21st. So, you know, if the world was going to end on the 21st, it would have already started. But I was like, yeah, but the Mayans weren't on Chinese time. They were closer to our time. I mean, shit. So just that entire night, man, I was nervous as fuck. I don't even think I slept that night and all of the 21st. I was nervous and I didn't get over that shit till like the new year, like, you know, January 1st, 2013, because I just... For years, I looked into that conspiracy theory, man. And I remember back in like 07, 08, I was sitting up in bed one night when I first learned about it. And that shit just convinced the hell out of me. I was watching the History Channel. 
I used to watch the History Channel all the time. And they had a documentary on, and I watched that documentary from beginning to end. And it convinced me that the world was really going to end. And I was like, man, I really only got four years left to live. (laughs) And I kind of like forgot about it, but it never left the back of my mind. And when that night came, boy, I was like, it was weird. Like I was scared, but I wasn't really scared. Like I had the sense enough to realize that, man, the world's probably really not going to end. And then, you know, I looked at all these other theories kind of disproving it. But just part of me just was a little bit worried. And you got to understand, I was only like 14. And I was, how how fuck old was I? Yeah, I was 14, man. So, you know, I'm young. And like I said, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to end. But just that small portion of me that thought it might end was, man, that shit had me terrified. So, um. You know, that was a really good conspiracy theory, man. But not really. Like, once you really look into it, you realize it was just a bunch of bullshit. Like most conspiracy theories are. Um, You got to understand, man, when you look for something, you're going to find it. Like, you could find a conspiracy theory with pretty much everything. Like, even... Even simple shit, man. Like, like a lot of people have conspiracy theories about how they listen to our phone calls. and Like, how they're listening to my uh, podcast right now, which... Hey, I'm I, honestly, I honestly believe it, man. I remember I was up in New York, right? I was up in New York in like late May. And I was sitting up there at Central Park, right? And I was talking, I was talking to somebody and um, I mentioned, but what did I do? I mentioned, you know, that part for, for those of you who've seen Pulp Fiction, spoilers for those of you who are uh uh, 14 years behind, or no, 24 years behind, you still ain't seen Pope Fiction, spoiler alert, but, man, there's a part in Pope Fiction, right, where, um, John Travolta blows off Phil Lamar's head, Phil Lamar's character name is Marvin, he blows off Marvin's head in the car, and before that scene, that's the real famous scene where, you know, Samuel Jackson was like, say what one more goddamn time, motherfucker, I dare you, I double dare you, motherfucker, it was that scene, right? And I was talking about that scene in the uh in the preceding scene where or not the preceding, but the subsequent scene where Phil Lamar gets his hair blown off, right? Man, so tell me why I did that around one o'clock, right? I was sitting at Central Park. I walk back up to Times Square where my hotel is, you know, just chilling. It's around four, maybe five o'clock. Hop on YouTube, and the very first recommended video on my YouTube, you know, the home page. The very first recommended video was Phil Lamar getting interviewed, talking about getting his head blown off. I saw that shit and I said, man, it is no doubt in my mind anymore because I had been talking to people about that shit. And, you know, it was always it wasn't never it wasn't ever that goddamn blatant. Like usually it would be, um, for example, like. I didn't really grow up watching John Cla- John Claude Van Damme. I just started watching him like a few months ago. Like, of course, I knew who he was. I knew his work, but like, I, I watched Bloodsport and a couple of his other movies like a few months ago. And I would watch some of the movies, and I would get on Amazon and shit, and they would be selling some of his apparel and things like that. So it was usually stuff like that where it was just kind of, kind of, how do I want to say, kind of, kind of discreet. You know what I'm saying? Or like, for example, I'm a really big Batman fan, right? And sometimes I'll get on Amazon or something like that. I'll get on YouTube and it's always Batman videos on my shit. But that's kind of understandable because I'm sure at least one time I've searched Batman on Amazon. Well, no, I'm not. No, I I do know I've done that. So usually I would kind of like find a way to excuse it. I would try to make sense of it. I would use logic and I would say, well, you know, I did search Batman that one time on uh, Amazon or I have searched YouTube or I have uh, YouTube searched Batman quite a few times. I understand even if I go a month without watching anything, it was still being recommended. Like you always try to make sense of shit, right? But man, there was no goddamn excuse in that Phil Lamar. I said that shit and as soon as I got back to uh to the crib, that was the very first. I didn't even have to scroll down. It wasn't the second or third. That was the very first thing on my YouTube page, man. You cannot, you can't tell me, you can't tell me shit after that. They're clearly listening in, man. They're clearly listening in. Or like right now. But see, here's the thing. It's almost like when you try to test it, it doesn't work. So like right now, I could say, 
I could fake on here on this podcast and I could say, man, I really want to, uh, what's something that I, I just, I, I don't have any interest in. I could say, man, I really been thinking about picking up an F-150. I really want an F-150 pickup truck. Now, I don't ever talk about no fucking pickup trucks, right? But now that I've said it and I could talk about that for like five, ten minutes and really just talk about how much I love pickup trucks, it won't be on my eye. Uh, they won't see they won't have advertisements for that. It's like it's like they're actively listening. It's not even a robot. It's like there's a person assigned to you because if you it's like if you try to get them to do it, it won't happen. So like if I talk for five minutes and man, I want an F-150 so bad, blah, 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 blah. But they just heard me talk about how I'm trying to get them to do it. You won't see any goddamn ads. But let you just talk to a friend or something about something you want to buy or something you just bought or one of your friends said they bought something, man, you're going to see all type of advertisements for it. It's so weird, man. It's so weird. Like, like I remember one time, man, I was with my dad. I went over to spend some time with my dad, right? And he had a cigar. And we, we just had a little cigar talk for like five minutes, not even nothing serious. I got back home two days later. Man, it was cigars all on my page. You know what I'm saying? All on my Amazon. So, you know, they're definitely listening in, man. And I remember this morning I was looking at the news a little bit and, you know, Facebook denied listening in. But they were like, well, we have access to your microphones, but we only actually tap in when you're using it for some sort of, um, well, after you give us access and when you're using it for some sort of, uh, you know, feature on our on our uh, page. So, you know, video chat, voice messages, things like that. And I'm like, man, that's bullshit. That is bullshit. I'll give you another fucking example. Like, you know how you get calls from telemarketers? Now, if I call or text a homie of mine in Arizona, I call or text him. I will get telemarketers from Phoenix, Scottsdale, Tucson. Uh, uh, What's another... uh, Flagstaff. I'll get all kind of calls from Arizona if I call or text him, have any sort of interaction with him, even on Facebook. If I call one of my partners up in New York, I get calls and shit from New York. Telemarketers, Florida, whatever. Now, how do you explain that? Like I said, man, there's just certain things that once you peep game, once you realize they're doing it, you realize, man, these motherfuckers here. Because like at first... When you talk about something and you get on Amazon or you get on eBay or YouTube and it's just there, you just say, oh, man, what a coincidence. I was just thinking about this. Ain't that a coincidence? What a coincidence. That's what you think the first maybe 10 times. But like I said, when I saw that Phil Lamar shit, man, it was no doubt in my mind anymore. These motherfuckers are listening in. And the thing is, man, I mean, do you really expect them not to? I mean, let's just be honest. man. I mean, even us, even me and you. Like everybody, I'm assuming there's no government agents like just listening to this casually. I'm assuming most of y'all just got regular nine to fives. But <laughs> hell, I might have some uh, FBI subscribers and CIA and shit, but I doubt it. But let's just say me and you, right? Let's just be honest, man. If you could eavesdrop on a lot of people, you probably would. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be honest. Because like, for example, I live in a condo. Sometimes when I when I can hear my neighbors talking, I ain't going to lie. I can I I try I, I listen well I don't say I try but I listen in on that shit I don't try to not hear it you know what I'm saying so you know imagine if you literally had the power just to listen to any and everybody you wanted to ninety five percent of y'all would be listening in you know and sometimes I like to say that I wouldn't but I mean goddamn it's so tempting how do you not you know that's that's even like bro there I think it's Samsung I can't remember what brand of TV it is but I'm ninety percent sure it was Samsung. These Samsung TVs, you know, they have cameras on the TVs. The motherfucking cameras work even when the TV is unplugged. Now, what kind of bullshit is that, man? Just like some of these Samsung phones. You can turn that motherfucker off and they can still tap into the microphone and listen. This isn't any sort of conspiracy theory or anything. They have came out and admitted this. They said, yeah, yeah, we could do it. So what? Yeah, shit. Yeah, we could do that. So you can turn your motherfucking phone off. You could turn it off and they can still tune in. Now, I don't know if they can still do it if the phone is dead. But I mean, shit, they probably can, right? 
So just imagine that shit, man. Or look at these Amazon uh, Alexas, you know, the uh, what do they call it? The Echoes, Amazon Echoes. You see these you see the weird shit these uh these uh Alexas are doing. I mean, goddamn. I saw one this uh he was like uh he uh, man, this was a while ago. I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said, Alexa, give me directions to uh No, no, matter of fact, I don't think he said anything. I think he was just sitting up there chilling, you know, just at the house cooking, you know, watching TV, whatever. And Alexa said, Giving directions to funeral homes <laughs> And and Alexa started giving uh, directions to all these different cemeteries and funeral homes and all this bullshit. I, I said, what the fuck? And then, you know, we've all seen the one where Alexa says uh, killing the baby or something, uh, murdering the baby or something like that, man. Like this technology, man, is crazy. Like, like I'm only 20 years old, man. I think like when I get to my parents age 30 years from now, like what kind of world are we going to be living in? Like, I honestly think the end of the world, I won't see it. My my uh children won't see it. And I don't even think my great-grandchildren will see it. But I think eventually the world is going to end by robots just taking over. Because these AIs just get, they're, they're going to get to a point where we can't keep up. Because AIs are going to are gonna have the advantage. Like, right now, even though they are technically smarter than the majority of people, they're not advanced enough to keep updating themselves just without people. But eventually they're they're going to be self-updating. They're going to be self-aware. And, you know, an AI can work all day long. You know, your phone technically can be working all day long, 24 hours a day. A person has to sleep. A person has to eat. A person has to use the bathroom. These robots don't have to do all that bullshit. So I think eventually, man, we're, that's how we're, humans are going to meet their demise. Either, either that or, you know, probably nuclear war or something. But I honestly think it's going to be like iRobot. <laughs> I mean, because these just, these, I mean, even now, man, like, like, like sometimes, like, I just think a lot. And sometimes, man, I just sit and think, how crazy is it that within not even a second, like a, 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 a hundredth of a second, I can text somebody on the other side of the planet? Like, that's just sometimes I just think about te- simple things in technology. I say, man, that is crazy. How simple is it or how, how amazing is it that, um, Shit, like what's another example? Shit, even even these even these podcasts. How amazing is it that I can sit up here and run my goddamn mouth for however long, upload it to YouTube, and literally anybody on the planet has the potential to look at it and rewatch it and you know break it down. And even twenty years from now, you know, if YouTube doesn't close down, somebody can go and listen to my voice from twenty years ago. So twenty years from now, somebody could be listening to this right now. That's crazy to me, man. Um, you know, cause hell, just fifty years ago, shit, you wanted to call somebody all across, uh, all over the world. You know, think about like, you go back to the thirties. You wanted to call somebody, you had to talk to the operator. They had to plug your motherfucking ass in, and you know, you had to find a pay phone somewhere. But now we just got all of that right in our pocket, like all in my hand. Like I'm holding my iPhone right now, laying on the couch. I got all of that. And I could do everything within like not even a full second. I could text somebody in Japan right now. Bam. Easy. I can video chat them. I can, you know, send a text. You know, you you can become friends on Facebook with all these different people, like even on my YouTube. You know, of course, most of my people are in America, but I got some people in the UK. I got some people in Bosnia. Um, you know, I was just looking at my analytics uh, the other day. Um, Japan. India, uh, Croatia, different countries in Africa. It's just, man, it's like, wow. It's just, technology is so crazy, man. And it's just, it's like, wow. How the motherfuckers figure this shit out? Like, you think about somebody like me, man. If if it was up to me, I wouldn't, we'd be back in a stone age, man. I can't figure all this goddamn shit out. (laughs) It, It really is crazy. But yeah, I want to talk about some more conspiracy theories. Like, like I think one podcast for like two hours. I'm just going to talk about nothing but nothing but conspiracy theories. Because like, like even that flat Earth shit, man. Even flat Earth, like it sounds silly. You're like the Earth is flat, man. What? Shut the fuck up. But 
I was listening to uh, this guy named Eric Dubé. He's kind of like the leader. He's kind of like the pseudo leader of the Flat Earth uh, movement, right? I was listening to him and uh, Eddie Bravo talk and somebody else. I can't remember who was on the damn show, but it was Eddie Bra- Bravo's podcast. And he was asking some questions. And at first it was all it sounded like bullshit, you know, because it's just. Saying the earth is flat is just, you know, that's like the biggest conspiracy theory ever, honestly, because it's like you're literally saying millions of people have been lying for decades, hundreds of years even. And, you know, it's really easy to just dismiss everything he's saying at first. But he did ask some questions that did kind of like make me kind of raise my eyebrow. Like, I still do believe the earth is round. I'll probably die believing the earth is round unless there's just substantial evidence proving it's not. But he did raise some questions. I was like, hmm, I, I would like to ask a, an astronomer or, or a geologist or something. We're not a geologist, but an astronomer or something like that, an astrophysicist. I would like to ask somebody about some of these questions. Like he was talking about, for example, like, OK, I'll give you a perfect example. The ocean. Let's just take the Atlantic Ocean, not all the oceans, but just the Atlantic. Millions of tons heavy, right? And the gravity on this earth is strong enough to hold that down. How is the gravity strong enough to hold everything we have on this earth down, but we can still jump? Like, just just think about that for a second. Think about how strong the gravity has to be to hold everything on the earth down. Now, of course, this is dispersed over a wide, you know, wide spectrum. You know, it's a large area of land. You know, the earth is gigantic. But still, just think about that for a second, how strong the gravity on the earth has to be, but that we can still jump and that we don't feel heavy as fuck. You know, it just it, it, it sounds silly. And he, he was saying he was theorizing that it's not about gravity. It's just about density. You know, because, of course, helium balloons can still float up. But the reason they float up and gravity doesn't pull it down is because the helium and a helium balloon is less dense than, uh, you know, uh, the oxygen and the, the, re- the rest of the air. Because, you know, it's not complete oxygen. It's some nitrogen and some other stuff. But he was saying that helium is less dense than what's in the air. Makes complete sense. That's why helium goes up. But why doesn't gravity pull down the helium balloon? Why does gravity... Uh, not why does it like discriminate why does gravity not pull down helium and you know like I said it could just be the fact that I don't know shit about any of that and that's why it's kind of making me raise my eyebrow but that was like one question that did kind of have me like hmm I never really even thought about that how strong gravity has to be but it's not strong enough or it's not it doesn't work on helium like that really just just doesn't doesn't really make sense to me but here's the real question now, if you put in the formulas that basically tell you what the circumference of the world is, the radius. No, the circumference. I'm sorry. Circumference is the right term. If you put in the formula that says what the circumference of the uh, Earth is, um, you plug in all these different numbers. By that rule, every 6,000 feet, there should be a dip. There should be a dip every 6,000 feet. No, was it 6,000 feet or every 6,000 miles? It might be 6,000 miles. It doesn't matter. But every 6,000 miles, there should be a dip. And let me tell you something, man. I've rode in these goddamn planes. I've gone thousands of miles. I don't feel any goddamn dip. I've been in boats that have gone that many miles. I don't feel any dip. Um, And there was some admiral, some Navy admiral, 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 you know what I'm trying to say, man, admiral. And he was talking about, well, no, that's impossible. If there was that dip, uh, we wouldn't be able to, you know, because, you know, they're able, they have microscopes and things and, and, and different radars on the ships that allow them to see thousands of miles. And he was like, no, 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 no. That's not right, because if that was right, we wouldn't be able to see these people over the horizon. But when we get that microscope, we get our, or not microscope, our telescope, we can see these people. So. That math doesn't sound right. That's what he said. And they silenced his motherfucking ass. They told his ass to shut your motherfucking ass up. And there was another Navy admirable. Man, I keep saying admirable. Admiral. I guess because I never say that word. But there was another Navy admiral. And he went to Antarctica. He went to Antarctica, right? And 
he went and he, uh, you know, he transversed over all the ice and everything, but he kept going and going and going. And he said that on the other side of Antarctica, there's an entire new continent that we've never discovered. And it's lush, it's green, it's fertile, and it's gigantic. He said it's bigger than any continent we have. You know, this is a guy that's been all, all, all over the world. He said this fucking continent is gigantic. And it's on the other side of Antarctica. And, um, you know, hey, man, we all need to go down there. He was like excited. He came back, you know, he was like, hey, man, we need to go down there. We need to send search teams and everything. It's it's lush. It's resources. It's, you know, woo, 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 woo. They silenced his motherfucking ass. And it's just like something. It's, it's like, first off, why would he make that up? And second off. Like, why would you silence him if he was making it up? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, that's just like me, man. If I go somewhere, let's say I just go MIA for a week. But in reality, I just lock myself up in my condo. But I say I went down to Antarctica and I really did some uh, traveling for about a week or two. And I say I discovered this. Nobody's going to take me serious. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because what? It's, it's all bullshit. But there has to be some truth to that, man. And this and the thing was, he doesn't he didn't re- like really know he was he was going to be silent. He was just he, he went down there. He was like he he thought he was bringing back good news. He was like, yeah, guys, there's there's a there's a whole nother continent. Woo, 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 woo. We got to go. We got to go. And they silenced his ass, man. Look into that. Like I didn't. This was a while ago when I listened to that podcast. It was about two months ago. So I can't remember exactly everything I remember. Plus, it was super long and I wasn't paying that much attention. But there were certain things he talked about that was like, man, that's that's interesting. And that that part right there with that uh, the the Navy Explorer, like that just it, it made me raise my eyebrows a couple of times, man, because it's like, man, what the fuck? You know, that's 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 so weird. But still, even with all of that and I have a lot of more questions, I'm just giving you guys some examples. But, you know, even with all the questions and all the bullshit, it just. It seems silly to me that everybody is lying about the earth being flat. And it just seems silly that you look at all these planets because we can prove to other planets around. You know, I can get a telescope right now and look up there at nighttime. But it does seem kind of silly that all these planets around and we're not. You know what I'm saying? That does seem kind of silly. And it seems silly that also all these books all these holy books, the Bible, the Quran, all these different books, they talk about the earth being round. Now, um, I know a lot of you guys, anytime anything pertaining to religion, you just like to uh, write it off. But, you know, I do think it's I don't think it's a coincidence that all these books say a lot of the same different things uh, concerning science and um, the history of the earth and everything. So, you know, I, I don't know, man. And at the end of the day, I don't know. And y'all really don't know. Like, you know, I don't know all these formulas and everything to prove the Earth is round. I'm just taking all these people's word for it. You know, and I don't think the uh, footage from space is real or it, it's fake. You know, I, I really do think we, we go up to space all the time. I think there's satellites up there. We have uh, cameras and, you know, I don't think any of that is conspiracy theory. But at the end of the day, I really don't know. I think I know, but I really can't prove it, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can prove to you that iPhones work. I can prove to you that I could send a message to somebody in Japan. I can prove that, but I can't prove that we've been to space. I really think we do. There's no doubt in my mind that we have, but I really can't prove it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. The flat earth shit, it's, it, it has a lot of holes in it, but there are certain things. If you just listen to somebody long enough, they are going to ask some questions that just kind of make you say, hmm. And the thing is, man, I'm open minded, like. If I was to ever, like, I could be, I could get my mind completely changed about Flat Earth. I could one day end up believing it. But, you know, you got to bring a lot of solid facts, man, because there's so much evidence just saying that the Earth ain't fucking flat. And then also, my main thing with the Flat Earth, like, before I even listen to what somebody has to say, my first question is, why? Like, with every conspiracy theory, you have to ask why. Well, what's the purpose of them saying this? What's the purpose of them saying that? Like, for example, JFK. There's plenty of reasons why you could say they lied about that or why they would lie about it. 9-11. There's plenty of reasons why you could say they would lie about that. Aliens. uh, 
you know, what's some other conspiracy theories? Uh, uh, Tower Nine. Uh, 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 I mean, shit, man, you know, we can go all day. There's plenty of reasons why you could say, hell, even Hitler still being alive. There's reasons why you could say they will lie about that. But the earth being flat, I just really don't see a purpose in lying about that. Because, for example, man, if I grew up and I always heard the earth was flat, that's not going to affect me in any way. You know what I'm saying? I would still assume I couldn't fall off and you know, whatever, man, I wouldn't be scared at all, especially if I was always born thinking that the earth was flat. It'd be one thing if right now they came out tomorrow and said, yeah, the earth is flat. We've been lying. But, you know, think about. uh, Like, for example, how Pluto isn't a planet anymore. You know, Pluto isn't a planet anymore. Right. But that didn't affect me at all. Like, I don't give a fuck about Pluto not being a planet like. Honestly, I just don't care what's going on in space. As long as I'm alive and it's, I'm, I'm not in any danger, I really don't care. So I don't know, man. The Earth being flat, there's just really no reason for it. And that's that's always my main question. Well, yeah, bro, you're 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 saying a lot of different things that do kind of make me raise my eyebrows. But still, why? Why would they lie about this? Why? And they always like to say, well, when. When you lie about what, what, what sort of planet you're on, it gives you complete control over the people. How? I mean, how? I mean, what are you talking about? And then they say uh, it's a lot easier to control people when the earth is round. Like I said, again, how? That doesn't make any sense. Um, hell, you could tell me we lived on a cube, a cube, a cone, a, sp- a sphere, a, 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 a flat disk, a plane, you know, whatever. It wouldn't matter. I mean, what's that got to do with me? I can't go up to space. I don't have the resources. And even if I did, the shape of the earth wouldn't, you know, dissuade me from going. Either I'm curious or I'm not. I don't see how that I don't see the correlation. I really don't. But see, the thing is, with the flat earthers and pretty much with everybody, once you start asking legitimate questions about what they're talking about, they they want to just write you off and they want to start yelling and hooping and hollering. You know, and that's with everything. That's with Democrats. That's with, with Republicans. Uh, conspiracy theorists. Look at Alex Jones. You really think you could ask Alex Jones? You think you could have a civil conversation with Alex Jones? That motherfucker's going to be red and hooping and hollering. Man, I'm not going through all that bullshit. So I don't know, man. But one of these days, I'm going to have a podcast and we're going to dive into all this shit, man. We're going we gonna to break it all down and I might get some of y'all on a train and I might get some people y'all saying I'm a fucking idiot. But <laughs> Like, even right now, like, when I was asking some of those questions, some of y'all, man, this stupid-ass motherfucker. But, you know, it is what it is, man. But I'm going to go ahead and finish getting ready for school. I got about uh, 37 minutes in. I may just upload it like this. I may not. You know, shit, y'all listening. Y'all know more than me already because y'all are already listening to this bullshit. So uh, we'll see what we do. But if this is the end, I appreciate you guys watching as always. And peace.